I like Spurgeon. In Spurgeon, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Without reading more, have you ever thought about that concept sometimes? Standing still? Have you ever done this when you were a child? Have you ever been in a city and you went to a street corner and you stood on that street corner perfectly still and looked up and you didn't say a word? Gradually in time, did you notice that other people came alongside and stood still and looked up? Some for a while before they looked around and walked away. Some, recognizing that it was a joke, stayed and looked up also and went along with the gag. But have you ever noticed how standing still sometimes can be a very obvious testimony or witness of something different about you when everyone else is running or panicking in a storm? Have you ever stood still when everyone else is terrified or shook up from bad news that they've heard on the phone? Sometimes there's nothing you can do except to stand still, and sometimes standing still is the most powerful thing you will ever do as a witness for Jesus Christ. Having faith to be able to do that is a challenge. But there are times when it is the big it is the best thing that you could ever do as a witness. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. These words contain God's command to the believer when he is reduced to great straits and brought into extraordinary difficulties. He cannot retreat. He cannot go forward. He is shut up on the right hand and on the left. What is he now to do? The master's words to him is, stand still. It will be well for him if at such times he listens only to his master's word. For other and evil advisors come down with their suggestions, and despair whispers, lie down and die. Give it all up. Go somewhere else. Do something else. You've blown it. You're no good. you failed. But God would have us put on a cheerful courage, even in our midst of and in the middle of our worst times, he would cause us to rejoice in his love and faithfulness because it is not based upon our actions, but his. Cowardice says, retreat, go back to the world and its ways. Look at flight or fight. And what is that type of reaction to what God would say in his action, stand still and see my salvation? You cannot play the Christian's part. It is too difficult. Relinquish your principles. Give up. After all, it's only natural to protect yourself or to flee. But however much Satan may urge this course upon you, you cannot follow it if you're a child of God. His divine fiat has been the <coughs> to go from strength to strength. And so thou shalt, and neither death nor hell nor anything else shall turn you from your course. What if, for a while, you were called to stand still, yet this is but to renew your strength for some greater advance in due time? Precipitancy cries, do something, stir yourself, get going. To stand still and wait is sheer idleness. We must be doing something at once. We must. Got to be busy. Do it, do it, do it. Go, go, go. And we say so because we think it is so, instead of looking to the Lord, who will not only do something, but will do everything. Presumption boasts, if the sea be for you, march into it and expect a miracle. Just have faith. After all, God has already told you what to do. But faith listens neither to presumption, nor to despair, nor to cowardice, nor to precipitancy, but it hears God say, stand still and obeys. An immovable rock as it stands, it stands still. Stand still. Keep the posture of an upright man, ready for action, expecting further orders, but waiting and doing as God has said, cheerfully and patiently awaiting and directing voice. And it will not be long ere God shall say to you, as distinctly as Moses said to the people of Israel, go forward.
Whenever God tells you to do something, just do it. It's that simple. When you don't know what to do, wait. Be still. Hear his message to you and then do as he has told you to do. If you've blown it, then repent. If you failed, then ask God's forgiveness. If you don't know his direction, then ask for it. Because Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door would be open. For everyone that asks, receive. And he that seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door should be opened. And God will come in. And he will be your salvation. And he will bring the word of the Lord to you. And speak clearly that you would understand it. So you would know where to go, what to do what to say, and even at times to stand still because you might, if you do anything else, just get in the way.